it's like full on summer weather here. I haven't perspired in a very long time. Let's go, New Orleans, day one! There's an insane line that we are in for Café du Monde's Bonnet. We got the goods! First meal in New Orleans. Okay, I lied. We had the bonnets earlier, but it was just a snack. I got keju hash brown with some omelette, and my partner got gumbo. We are now walking over to the Voodoo Museum. Let's go, let's go, let's go. This is the New Orleans Historic Voodoo Museum, and we are gonna pop inside to check it out. Next stop, the Museum of Death. Well, hello. And hello, Bloody Mary. We are having our very first cup of moonshine. This is the midnight moon apple pie moonshine. It's basically whiskey infused with cinnamon and apple juice. hotel and I'm just sitting in the lobby to film this but yeah I wanted to give a quick review of our dinner at Koshan. It's located slightly outside of the touristy downtown area so you do have to walk for about 10 minutes but it's super worth the walk just because the food was excellent, the service was great, the ingredients were all very fresh and the highlight for me for the meal was definitely the moonshine. So moonshine is this supposedly um, illegal, or rather it's produced illicitly. It's kind of like a hot liquor, kind of like whiskey. They produce it illicitly here in the US and it stemmed from the prohibition period. But anyway, yeah, the restaurant sold moonshine and we had one that was called 
midnight moon apple pie. It was absolutely delicious. We wanted to get a full bottle to take back to the UK, but they didn't sell it in a bottle form. So yeah, probably gonna go on online and try to find out if we can get a full bottle of that because it was so tasty. It has that strong alcoholic taste of a hard liquor, but it also has a very sweet uh, aftertaste because the midnight apple moonshine was mixed with its hard liquor mixed with apple juice and cinnamon so it was very nice smelling very tasty love it oysters my absolute favorite thing they look delicious and then obviously if you have oysters you gotta have bloody mary Let's try the biggest one and obviously I have to put some of this red onion sauce on it. And then here we have tuna crudo. I love my crudo. This tuna crudo is really interesting because they added pickled vegetables to it. So it has kind of a peri Asian taste to it. I really like. Next up, we have some shrimp gumbo. This is, um, I think it's like shrimp mixed with some noodles. And this is Brussels sprouts with chili and vinegar. I love Brussels sprouts. For dessert, we're sharing a carrot sticky toffee pudding. It's their signature dish. We actually wanted to go to the cafe over there. It's called Auction House, but it wasn't open at 11 a.m. yet. So we decided to cross the street and try out this restaurant and oyster bar instead. And it was such a good decision because the food was awesome. We are at the New Orleans Pharmacy Museum, but it's closed! Dang! This is our next stop. This is another Voodoo Gallery slash store. It's Voodoo Authentica. Let's go in! morning our flight back to the UK is tomorrow so right now we are in line to get our COVID-19 test done it's a pre-flight test that we have to do before we bought the plane in the US and then when we get off in London we have to take another PCR test so that's the current regulation this is Bourbon Street in New Orleans this morning we went to have brunch at this pretty famous restaurant here in New Orleans. It's at Bourbon Street and it's called Felix Oyster Bar. There was a freaking long line you guys. It opens at 11 and we were there at 11.05 and the queue had already formed. Here's a pro tip. There is actually a second secret outlet. So you go to that Felix outlet that you see on Google Maps and if there's a really long line, just walk further down and turn a corner. I forgot whether it's left or right. You can figure it out when you're there. But you will see that there's another sign that says Felix Oyster Bar. 
there's always a plane flying when you're trying to film. So yeah, so anyway, you will find that there's another second secret outlet and it is actually not reflected on Google Maps but you will see the sign there and there was also a queue there but it's much shorter and we actually only had to wait for about 5 minutes because there were two of us so we got to go in much earlier than a lot of the other larger groups that were queuing so that's great and um, each of us ordered a pole boy <laughs> Po boy is one of the signature dishes in Louisiana and what it is is something kind of like a subway sandwich um, but the difference is that for a sub the filling is usually some kind of cold cut but for a po boy it's always a hot sandwich so it comes in like a baguette looking bread but it doesn't taste like a typical French baguette the outside is equally crispy but it's a lot softer and less chewy and then on the inside it's a lot fluffier uh, and for the filling of a po' boy, it's usually some kind of meat or seafood and usually fried seafood. So it could be fried shrimp, fried crawfish, fried oysters. I ordered a fried crawfish po' boy. My partner got a shrimp one. And if you're ever going to Felix to try a po' boy, I would strongly suggest that you try the shrimp one instead because the crawfish one was a little bland. I felt like the fried shrimps were a lot better seasoned so it was tastier. So that's what we got. Um, and in case you're wondering why it's called Po Boy, back in the day, this sandwich was used to feed most of the working class people. So whenever someone was popping in to get a sandwich, there will be someone that yells, Hey look, there's a Po Boy. So hence the name Po Boy came about. We also tried another classic Louisiana dish and that's the jambalaya. And what that is, is basically rice, meat and veggies all jumbled together. Um, it's a dry dish and I personally didn't really like it because it had kind of like a smoky taste to it and I personally don't like my foods to taste smoky so stuff like aburi sushi I don't like either so it's just a personal preference but we did order a jambalaya to try so far I think we've tried a couple of classic deep south dishes there's shrimps and grits which you guys know I love um, and then there's jambalaya which we had this morning there's also the pole boy that I talk about and there's another one called um, etouffee which we haven't had um, oh we also had gumbo gumbo is kind of like a stew usually mixed in with okra so it's a lot thicker in consistency and again it's a mixture of meats and veggies and sometimes it comes with a dollop of rice so kind of like jambalaya except the jambalaya is dry and gumbo is a wet dish so that's that and then I was talking about the etouffee that's something that we haven't tried yet yeah but we could go for it if we see that and yeah that's pretty much all the classic dishes that we have been trying out and in case you're wondering right now we are seated in front of this random art gallery it's called Studio B we are no longer in downtown New Orleans we had to take an uber ride for about 10 to 15 minutes out it's in the middle of the suburbs let me show you guys <laughs> it opens at 2 p.m. and right now it's 1.54 so we have about a few minutes to kill so I'm just sitting outside and chatting to you guys so this is currently my view I'm sitting at the bench outside Studio B and this is what I'm looking at Studio B is located literally in the middle of nowhere and there are even train tracks here Dreams came true And everybody, everybody likes 
We just came out of Studio B. It was a really interesting art exhibit. They were showcasing works by the local community, so mostly the African American artists, and a lot of the displays were reflecting their concerns on racial equality, equal opportunities, um, as well as their dreams, their hopes and aspirations for the nation and for the future of their people. It was overall a really good trip. I'm glad we took an Uber ride out to get here. I felt like it was very worth it. The tickets were priced at 15 bucks per person, but given how relatively big the space was, I would say it's worth a trip down. And it's actually a lot quieter than the other galleries and museums that we have been to in downtown New Orleans, just because this is located in the outskirts, so there are visibly fewer people in the gallery. And now we are walking over to check out this popular street in the area. I know I say we are in the suburbs but apparently there's a pretty popular street here called Frenchman Street. It's kind of like Bourbon Street in the downtown area so we are gonna pop over there and see what it's all about. Here we are. This is Frenchman Street. It's a stretch of shops and bars and cafes. For starters, we order escargot. This is my dinner. I ordered shrimp etouffee. It is my first time having etouffee and it looks really yummy. And my partner got grilled red fish with a side of sauteed spinach. Oh, and I ordered their galatoire's milk punch. It tastes kind of like Ignore, <laughs> it's really quite nice. 